and matter of uh, uh, I'm of the the it's high time. Well, I came into politics because I I looked at the old smell and I found out that majority of the people are running away from politics. GDL. Um, first of all, let me talk to you about GDL and I'll talk about the conference. We have two licenses, an asset management license and a finance license. There are many asset management companies. What's different about us? We are big about growing the middle class. So the financial products we are working on are products that will grow the middle class. That's why, for example, we have the current money market fund. So we're very big on growing the middle class. For the middle class to grow, companies must become transgenerational. They must live for a long time. Nigerian companies tend to fail even after they've succeeded. So we have positioned ourselves to work with companies to, to ensure they continue to succeed. That's the focus of today's um, conference. You know, there are challenges that are uh, uh, a result of how the economy is, and that's not going to change. But what we think people can change, people can change how they react to and how they respond to, to the challenges. One of those challenges is that entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs need significant payoffs. If they take all those payoffs from the cash of the company, the company will fail. That's one of the things we're saying. But if they restructure the company in such a way that the market can pay them for some of their sweat, they will have a lot of money and the company will succeed. The team is building transformational business, trans transgenerational businesses. Given the fact that the youth make up over 60% of Nigeria's population, uh, it is safe to say there's a strong likelihood that the businesses being nurtured by entrepreneurs today will be run by a younger generation in the near future. Uh, the transition to the next generation thus requires an intricate strategy uh, in order for the business to remain relevant for a new generation. So what makes a successful transgenerational business the exception rather than the norm? Number one, um, lack of succession plan uh, and we always this is the major you know source of the problem uh, and it always leads to appointing unprepared next generation leaders uh, you know and what often happens here is that emotions uh, nepotism you know and issues like that influence the appointments because oh I, i'm retiring let my son take over but if, if your son ready for the job a second issue that often leads to failure in transgenerational businesses is conflicts that arise when there are unexpected issues they of the founder you know that's no we have seen successful people who have died without a will you know and we have left chaos behind because there's no will and the, the beginning point people begin to fight over who should take which company and at the end of it all what would have succeeded becomes uh, a failure but the next issue that often causes this uh, failure of transgenerational businesses is actually uh, poor strategic planning uh, we have issues in our country where we take short term and refuse to take long term. The long term will always come, but we always think that uh, you know the next five years is good enough. Uh, if somebody plans for the next hundred years, we should plan for when we are not around. And until we begin to do that strategic planning, then we will not prepare for the future for succession. It's just something I view 
of the key things I believe that we can all talk about. Uh, but I'll try to focus on now on the few things that I believe we can do to achieve proper succession planning. Our businesses to our labor, we need to know that people can retire, people can be fired, people can fall sick, people can die. And so it has to be deliberate. You know, again I'm going to speak about uh, a bank that I know very well because the bosses train me, uh, you know, in Chase Manhattan Bank in those days. A bank that we are, you know, without mentioning the entire bank, the CEO dies unexpectedly. Wonderful man who brought me in banking. You know, but thank God that was a deputy managing director. You know, thank God. A lot of the customers of the bank did not even know that the CEO died. You know, that bank is still extended today. You know, and we know the bank. But we really know the bank very well. You know, so when the truth of the matter is that these things are bound to happen, you know, and sometimes when we are not ready. But if the institution is still trying, because there were there was a deputy managing director who was prepared for the job. Finally, it's important that you use a plan to develop a hiring strategy. Sometimes you might need to hire from outside. It is not always that you have the resources that you need inside. Uh, the truth of the matter is that, uh, you know, uh, we always get emotional with those who are inside. But if we don't have the people who are ready now in the inside, we might need to get somebody from outside and get somebody in the inside in the future. But in the interim, we need somebody from the outside. What is critical for us? And why we want to focus on it is on why do stable companies fail in an environment more than other environments? Um, if you look at this um, slide, some of the statistics we've seen say that you know 70% of companies do not survive for the long term. From the statistics to the new on more than 15 years. I think it says 30 percent usually go before the two or three years, 50 percent in five years, and by year 15, you don't have more than 25 percent so far it's surviving. So what is the problem we want to focus on? What do we want to focus our minds on is that can the legitimate compensation needs of an entrepreneur be met without disrupting the business. Now, to be fair, entrepreneurs have legitimate needs. And if you work that and you build a strong company, it's okay to be significantly rewarded. I think the part of the communication that needs to be put forth more clearly is that really, really, would you find a company exception? Rarely will you find a company whose operating cash flows alone are sufficient to compensate the entrepreneur without killing the business. Don't think it's just for a medium-sized business like Fitzy. Fitzy is market cap of 9 billion. So you ask me that you don't know to decided to walk away from Fitzy. That's okay. I'll sell 10% of Fitzy. Even if he doesn't get a premium on it, he will walk away with 900 million. And the beauty about that 900 million is that he does not take a penny away from this 359 million. I think entrepreneurs, when they think about preparing their companies to accept and admit other parties, have not been made to see that that is in strong alignment with a combination of their own financial objectives and the longevity of the company. Bank of Industry provides uh, loans 
you know, for them to enable them to set up their own businesses. You know, and but you have to undergo some training. Uh, you have to send, send a feasibility study to show, and then we take we have a committee that looks at it to know if it's a viable business, and then we send them to a free, you know, of course, free in the sense that we pay for it uh, to uh, an entrepreneurship development center, including Lagos Business School. Cardinal Business School, where we train them for some time before we give them money. And the beauty about this is that no tangible security. You have to get someone uh, who we can trust, especially somebody in public service, who can just write a guarantee that you can do the business. And then we have another fund, what we call YES, which is the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme, which is actually for youth coppers. You know, if you know you are in the National Youth Service, uh, we go to all the NYSC camps and we have partnership with NYSC. And what they do is that, uh, they, again, they, do, they pre pre present to us uh, business proposals on what they can do when they leave the youth, youth service camp. And if you present that, again, through the same process, we reveal it. It is something that we believe that can be able to generate employment. We give them money. The truth of the matter is that um, it is not possible for one bank alone, like Bank of Industry, to, to meet all the needs of everybody. Uh, you know, that's why we are set up to support those who are into value addition, uh, who are manufacturing, who are processing. Uh, so if you are into trading, you are the likely place to, you have to go to is a commercial bank. Uh, but like you said, it is not everybody that's a graduate. There are people who are not graduates who want something to do. My advice is start small. Always start small and then undergo apprenticeship. You cannot run a business that you are not skilled or trained to do. You know, our people want to become big from the one. But every big thing starts small. Sibling or your son or your child should run the company. 
they don't need to create the, the, the business value for you. So and if they can run it, or when I go to find that it's best to run it. So that's what I'm saying that the future for you is so everybody believes that big way should be run by a family member. I we didn't prepare grants for that. It, it, it can be, it may not be.
just address a few things that is bordering on the, um, the first comment that you made. Fixing, talking about the gender um, issues in our society, fixing is an acronym for Fidelis, which is the FI for Fidelis, daughters and sons. The D is for daughters and the SON is for the sons. But to be honest with you, I, I never built the business around my children. I built the business wanting to have a business that can outlive me. Right? So gender is a big issue. Please do. And it's not also necessary for you to build your business around your children. Right? Build your business believing that you are going to put it in the hands of the best available business manager that will make you proud and that will retain the value that you have created. I'm Nadu Denloe and I'm chairman of GDL. Well, you know, we're talking it's about transgenerational businesses, building transgenerational businesses. And you know, a lot of businesses as entrepreneurs, you know, they founder, you know, and uh, we've heard all the statistics about companies not succeeding their founders and all that. So this is to provide that focus, okay, and also how to institutionalize companies, firms, so that they can deliver to their successors and be transgenerational because at the end of the day that's what it sustains an economy that's what sustains a nation and that's what GDL is positioning itself to be able to do you know in challenges there are opportunities like one of the speakers said you know Nigeria is a land of challenges but it's also a land of great opportunities but you know the thing is you have to be uh, intentional about your business and about situating it properly and you know building that it as an institution putting in all this the necessary structures and things to make it successful and that's what GDL is wanting to support businesses to do Thank you.